blessings beautiful souls, Sarava and Ashe to you. How are you today? I hope you all had an amazing weekend. I certainly did. We hooked into some baking for the first time in a really long time. And I'm not sure if I've mentioned this before on my channel, but I am a terrible cook. I really don't like cooking at all. I'm just like, I get so anxious in the kitchen. But we decided to turn it into a family activity and every single one of us contributed. The kids had so much fun. And then we ended up with these delicious scones to eat. We had pumpkin scones and we had plain scones and everyone loved it. And it was a real worthwhile, warm and cozy family activity. I've got a lot on my plate today. I've got a lot of readings to get through and I'm really excited to be sitting down to do readings. I'm just gonna see where spirit takes me this morning. So, yay! I was inspired to pull a bit of a card today as I was preparing sacred space for my readings and I ended up reaching for the Goddess and Sirens deck which I have here on my altar most often because I do a lot of spirit work sessions with it and I pulled Mat, the Egyptian goddess of justice to completely oversimplify her attributes. I'm really feeling this, this sensation of righteousness and fairness towards oneself. I think as we begin our weeks, we acknowledge the level of obligation and responsibility that unfolds as a result of resuming the working week. And we can begin to delegate responsibilities to others and to ourselves in a manner that increases productivity as well as also creating stress and tension within our lives it's very easy to be gung-ho at the start of the week knowing of course that many feel like they need to drag themselves out of bed at the start of the week um, i'm one of those people that just shoot up out of bed and then my brain starts to tick and i think of the week that is before me and then i have to try to strategize all of my obligations and all of my responsibilities and doing so can be quite cumbersome and that task in itself can be really mind boggling and quite um, fragmenting to the concentration and, and also to the enthusiasm. So when I pulled this card this morning, I thought about fairness, I thought about the push and pull, I thought about rest and work, I thought about joy and obligation, which to me sits on the opposite end of joy. Obligation and joy sit on opposing sides. And I've got to say that it was a timely reminder for me to be very kind to myself, to be very fair, and to also not be lazy because it's very easy to just get complacent and even lethargic when you look at tasks so far in advance. And I'm certainly that way because I'm a Taurus, I'm a homebody, so I really have to fight off uh, lethargy and laziness from time to time. Lucky I'm a pretty fire-dominated type of person as well, so I'm not lazy for too, for too long, but I do enjoy having time to just sit and do absolutely nothing. And I didn't have any of that time this weekend. It wasn't, I didn't have that opportunity to be still. I was always doing something. Uh, yes, I was doing enjoyable things, but I just didn't have that time to reset. And so I don't think that I am going to be able to reach my 
my goals in the same way as I intend to reach my goals this week unless I'm fair towards myself. Uh, listening to my body, listening to my mind, listening to my spirit, understanding what I need in the moment, understanding that while I may have set myself a grand list of tasks for the week, I also have the right to re-evaluate that list in keeping with how it is that I am feeling. Nothing should be so static, so firm, especially when it comes to our own time management, our joys, our creativities, our pleasure, our practices as a whole. And so I feel like, yes, set a guideline of tasks for yourself, but don't make it so full on that you feel really overwhelmed and then you end up being out of balance in some way that can have adverse side effects to not just yourself, your health and well-being, but to the to your mood and as such the people around you as well. So this was a timely reminder for me and that's how it came through to me today. It's really about me and how I'm managing my time. It might come through to you in a very different way and that's perfectly okay. So really do consider that. Another aspect that I wanted to mention here, just real quick, uh, something that sort of echoes in the back of my own personal intuitive hits regarding this card is that it's time to take responsibility for your actions. If you find yourself in situations that make you uncomfortable, that don't bring you joy, that don't bring you pleasure, etc., etc., I mean, and, and, and think about this objectively because there are times where we are placed in situations out of pure necessity, so I'm not particularly referring to those times, but. It's more about acknowledging the choices that we make and how much control we do have over our lives and how sometimes when we experience like disconnects within our life, we experience small amounts or large amounts of drama, we can have a very, very good look at those situations and understand that many of us have a, have a small or a large part to play in those situations because of the choices that we make. And so it's coming to terms with the choices that you've made and learning from those mistakes and understanding that if you can acknowledge that your role in a matter has contributed to some of the stress, then you are less likely to find yourself in that same position next time around. So that's just something that I felt like adding in today. Something that feels a little true for myself as well. Sometimes I get myself in situations and I'm like, ah, it's because I did, said and agreed to this and all behaved in this way. Much of it has more to do with how we're feeling on the inside and it's really good to stay in touch with that mind, body, spirit. And to do that, we loop back to being fair, being just, allowing yourself to understand what is needed in each and every moment so that we can maintain that grounded, centered equilibrium. So that's, that's it for this one. I'm glad I could have this chat with you and I hope that you have found this to be of some benefit to you. Yes. I'm sitting here after smashing out a bunch of readings and I have come to the definitive c conclusion. I can't even speak. I'm so like woozy, but I have come to the definitive conclusion that my ancient paths reading, which are my past life readings are now officially going to shift into spirit work sessions because of the nature of the experience that I have when I'm doing these types of readings. It's really interesting how the transformation itself occurred. When I first started doing Ancient Paths reading, they were strictly tarot. And my perspective and approach towards tarot has changed significantly since I have moved here. And even a little bit while I was still up in Cairns. And I've been really hesitant to shift into a more intuitive mind frame when it comes to the tarot because I have worked really, really hard to build such a solid foundation of learning. I've invested a lot of money in books, in courses, in, in memberships, in just a lot of money in cultivating a really strong foundation in tarot. And now I just feel like my spirit work is taking over and I'm becoming much more intuitive 
and dare I say even psychic during my sessions, it's having an effect on me that I haven't yet been able to discuss with others. But today I just had this aha moment, a bit of an epiphany, if you will. Ironically, I was working with the uh, judgment card in a client's uh, reading and I thought to myself, wow, what's happening to me in this moment is more spirit than it is my knowledge of the tarot. Yes, I apply my knowledge of the tarot, the attributes of cards, the meaning, everything like that just makes that foundation of reading really strong for me. But what happens to me now is so magical and... As such, I'm no longer able to read these marathon sessions. I could, at some point in my time, and this is probably rewinding the calendar back some two years now, I could do, you know, over 15 readings in a day. And I think my record was 32. And that's like, I'm talking waking up at five o'clock in the morning, kicking off at six o'clock and going all the way through to 10 o'clock at night. Like just really long, grueling sessions. And I've had to do that uh, in the past. But now I'm really graceful in my approach. I'm, I limit my, my readings in one day so that I can give each and every client that experience that I feel so deeply when I am reading, it feels so sacred to me in the moment. And I want to slow down. I don't want to rush it. I just want to be there in that moment. I want to give it my all. I want to give it all my attention. I want to be able to articulate myself effectively. I want to be able to feel spirit and ritual. Like I just feel this intense transformation in the way that I read. And it all happened today I've just come to this definitive conclusion that spirit work is really really moving itself into a prominent position in my profession I now sit solidly half and half if that makes sense and uh, and I'm going to be updating my ancient paths listing to really reflect what takes place for me when I am doing that reading for others it's incredible I'm actually contemplating teaching a bit of spirit and and tarot, the melding of two. And if Ethany invites me to her summer school again, or if she has it again this year, then I might do it. I've um, participated in her tarot summer school two years in a row, so I do have two courses up there. I'll link those two courses, in fact. They're called Ritual Tarot and Weaving the Witch's Web. And these are really beautiful uh, tarot masterclasses designed to help to bring that element of ritual and magic and witchcraft into one's uh, tarot practice. But I'm looking at something like that. I would actually like to do more courses. So let's see what I can, I can muster up. Well, that's it for me today. I am starving hungry and it's almost that time to pick up the kids. Would you believe that all I have had to eat today is one pumpkin scone, two cups of one tea, one coffee, and that is it. I'm about to munch on some biscuits so, so that I can get through this final edit and then it's time to go and pick up the kiddly winks and just to have a, have a moment and maybe... I don't know, a really, really late lunch that will probably merge into dinner. Who knows? I have been locked away in the cabin, in the cottage, in the witch's cottage today, just doing my thing. And God damn, it feels good to be doing my thing. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you have enjoyed the reading that I did, the oracle reading that I did. I'm going to call that this week's oracle reading because I think I will do that again uh, next week. So if you do like it and you do want that to occur give this one a thumbs up mention it maybe in the comments that you're enthusiastic about that i don't know i'm just gonna you know weave some new things in here here there and everywhere if that makes sense <laughs> i can't hold a cohesive stream in my mind right now like everything's just uh, gibberish 
I'm not sure if I'm even making sense. So it's definitely time for me to eat something, at least something small. So thanks for hanging out with me today, beautiful souls. It was an absolute pleasure as per usual sharing sacred space with you in this way. Please do give this video a thumbs up. Please do share it around. It warms my heart when you do. It really does. I can't tell you how appreciated I feel when people share my videos around, when they comment. I mean, it's amazing. And I do get notifications when my videos are shared. So thank you to those who have shared my videos around it absolutely makes just uh, just my day it makes my day to know that the va the information that I'm sharing is valuable enough for you to want to show somebody else that just that's beautiful and uh, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel already then please do subscribe hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell because there's some exciting things going on I feel like I need to mention it once again this week my Wednesday northern hemisphere Tuesday I'll be sitting in with Spread This Witches, interviewing Rachel Pollock and Mary-Kate Greer about their amazing tarot journey, their reputation, the massive body of work that they have surrounding the tarot and all of the incredible achievements that they have made. Uh, within the wonderful world of tarot. So if you do want to participate in that live chat that will be taking place on the Spread This Witches YouTube channel, of which I am a part of, I'll leave the link once again in the description box below. So do not miss that because it is going to be amazing, especially if you are a huge lover of tarot. And uh, it's pretty damn exciting, what can I say? So there you have it. Much love to you. Many blessings. I'll see you tomorrow. Mwah!